Well, it's an image that we've become all too familiar with. Hundreds of people crammed onto small boats crossing the Channel. The government is using hotels and even container ships to house tens of thousands of people as they wait for asylum claims to be processed. It wants to send illegal migrants to Rwanda as a deterrent. But one man now facing deportation in that manner is an Afghan war veteran who flew combat missions against the Taliban with us. He only had one way to enter the UK, and that turned out to be on a small boat. He's now facing deportation to Rwanda. He says he's been forgotten by the people he worked alongside. And a campaign to stop his deportation through is gathering strength. It's been driven by the independent newspaper and has the backing of a number of senior military figures. And now this programme, too, is joining the fight to get justice for this hero. Well, joining me now is Lord Dannett, the former head of the British Army, who's announced his support for the campaign, and Geordie Gray, editor-in-chief of The Independent. Welcome to both of you. Geordie, I, I read this, and it's been building for several weeks, your campaign. You've had a lot of great names getting behind it. And the more you read, the more incensed you become about what's happened to this guy, but also the more you realise that there's a lot more to some of these stories on the small boats than the public probably realise. Piers, this is a hero. He fought 30 missions for the Afghan Air Force alongside British and American forces. We promised we would save those people who offered their lives to potentially be sacrificed in their and our fight against the Taliban for democracy, for values which we thought were worth fighting for. Now he's in a place in Britain being threatened with deportation would that be forced by handcuffs, by armed police, taking him on board a plane to go to Rwanda after we promised we would save them? He has actually even got the official permission process begun, this thing called Arab, which we promised those who go through that would be protected and looked after. Britain gave its word. Mm. We cannot allow him to feel victim to a what will be called a bureaucratic mistake but actually, for him, could be a disaster. And he had to leave uh, in a hurry after that catastrophic evacuation led by the Americans. Joe Biden ordered it. And it was obviously, we saw the horrendous scenes on television. And amid all the chaos, there was no safe, easy, legal route for him to take to this country. It was even worse than that, Piers. So at, the Independent pointed out that people who had to get the permission, this Arab document, they had to go to a government office manned by the pal Taliban. Right. I mean, the horror... Of... Who, if they'd known what he'd been doing, they'd kill him. Oh, he would be under threat. He's already had threats from them. He's got a family who is at risk. Is he married with he, kids? He's married with a child. We can't identify... But they're him. back in Afghanistan. They're in Afghanistan. I mean, it is a complete failure of our moral duty as a country. Let me bring in Lord Dannett. Lord Dannett, from your perspective, what do you think about this? Well, Piers... Um, just to put this in perspective, in July 2021, that was a month before our precipitate departure from uh, Kabul and Afghanistan, uh, I wrote an open letter supported by 43 service chiefs to the government to say we have got to do better, we've got to do more, and we've got to do more quickly for those Afghans who have stood shoulder to shoulder with us in the fight against the Taliban. And we got a pretty mediocre response, to be honest, from Priti Patel and Ben Wallace, uh, who were the two ministers who replied to my letter. So, frankly, there is no doubt at all that someone like this Afghan lieutenant, this pilot, who has thrown 30 missions uh, on behalf of the Afghan nation and in support of Allied forces, he absolutely deserves our protection. And the thought that he could be uh, extradited, sent away in handcuffs uh, to Rwanda is is just appalling. Um, it's a different issue about that policy, but as far as this chap's concerned, he has earned his spurs, he has earned his ticket to stay in this country, and his family should be coming across to spend their life, their future life, in peace and security with us in this country. I completely agree. And we should agree. be grateful Ge to them. Geordie, you've got a lot of people who have been supporting you. Um, I read Bear Grylls gave a really uh, stunning, I think, um, support for your campaign. What about Rishi Sunak? Because ultimately, as Prime Minister, he can probably decide this, this man's fate. Have you tried directly to contact him? Well, we had a letter written directly to Rishi Sunak by this hero, who we are waiting for a reply. The letter we published, it couldn't have been more clear. It was a, ask him if he was going to keep the word of Britain. And we need to hear back. 
There's been some talk that he, he passed it on to the Home Office to look into. We know this. No, that's not good it's enough. It's bureaucratic fudge. I, look, I interviewed Rishi at number 10. I think he's a decent guy. I think that, or I hope, if he's watching this now, and if not, we're going to send it to him, I hope Prime Minister, you do the right thing. This man is a hero who helped us take on the Taliban. His family are in Afghanistan. We have a moral compulsion as a country to save this man and to take care of him and to take care of his family. You have got a big new we, development on this in your paper tomorrow. We, we've got tomorrow's front page of the, of the Independent where he's been backed by Harry's, Prince Harry's friend, former colleague, mm. the former Marine, Ben McBain. Yeah, I had him on the show, yeah. Yeah, who says we've got to do what we said we'd do, which is keep our word to keep the people who fought to keep us safe, we will keep them safe. It's as simple as that. You know, Harry. Mm. Can't you get him involved too? <laughs> I probably can't bring him tonight. Um, but no, I'm sure that actually, to, I've always given Harry due credit for his yeah. service to his country in Afghanistan. And, and I think that if, if he is aware of this, I would like him to get involved and support this. Because to me, I mean, I'll bring Lord Dannett back here. You know Harry very well. I'd imagine that would be helpful. Any pressure, I guess, right now from anyone high profile who's got any connection with the military, particularly if they've served in Afghanistan, I would imagine might help. Well, Piers, you're absolutely right. And I'm sure Harry would be delighted to do that. But to be honest, I think where we've got to through Geordie's campaign from the Independent and just the outrage that this issue has caused, I would be very surprised if Rishi Sunak um, or Ben Wallace doesn't push this one through. The whole policy of uh, sending asylum seekers back to Rwanda is can be altered by ministerial discretion. Mm. Frankly, this is an issue that is so clear, so obvious. We have a moral obligation to this young Afghan pilot lieutenant that they should use that discretion now, they should announce it publicly and also quietly say that his family will come here as well. Frankly, if people don't have confidence on overseas operations when they support the British forces, yeah. that we will look after them. Why on earth will they look after us? Well, we'll be left in foreign countries, dithering away in languages we don't understand, and, for goodness sake, we'll need them. Yeah, I mean, my brother, as you know, he served in Afghanistan. Uh, he was a colonel over there, and he, you know, he, he is incensed about this. He thinks that we've let all these people down. And so I know he would be vociferously supporting this. Having people like Lord Dannett, former defence chief of the defence staff, yeah. an MC earned in Belfast, Served in Kosovo, served in Iraq. These are these are people yeah. who fought for our country, and they don't come and support these things lightly, no. unless they think this is supporting people who supported them when they led our army to do things which were necessary for the betterment of the world, for the maintenance of, of democracy and the fight for freedom. This is an important battle, and we really appreciate, Piers, you coming on board with it. With well, us. I'm giving you the full support of this show uh, because I think it is a really important battle. It may be one man, but it actually represents a large number of people who sacrifice a lot. Many of them sacrifice their lives. And he can't go back now because the Taliban will hunt him down yep. and they'll kill him. Uh, and he must be terrified about what's going to happen to his family. So, Geordie, it's a great campaign. I'm happy to lend my support to it. Really we're, going to keep, it. we're going to keep hammering away at number 10, and hopefully we'll get some good news sooner rather than later. Thank Re you really for coming appreciate in. that. Thank you. And, Lord Dunn, thank you very much, as yep. always, for coming on the programme and giving your support to it. Yeah, which well, I think well done, Piers. Good to see you. Yeah, well done, my Piers, and, and uh, best wishes to your brother. Thank you. He always speaks, as you know, very highly of you. So I will do that. He'll be, he'll be chuffed. Thank you very much. Bless you.